I'm Halcyon. Welcome to Hug Nation. Today, the topic is validation. I saw a film 10 years ago called Validation. It's a short film, black and white, very beautiful, very innovative and worth seeing. Highly recommend you look it up. It's available on YouTube. The gist of this film is about a man who works in the validation booth for you know two hours parking free with validation. And so people come up to give him the tickets and he starts giving them a different type of validation. He starts saying, you're great. You know, people walk away, what? And then saying, wow, you've got great cheekbones. Has anyone ever told you that? And, and the, he starts to give these really heartfelt compliments to people. And the reactions of people is, is you know, startling. And, and the, as the film pro- progresses, this huge line of people starts to form. And people just start parking their cars purely to get this validation. And the story continues. I urge you to watch it. But this idea that validation is so rare and so significant that it can be transformative, that we we seek it out, and that if we don't get it, there is this ache that we may not even realize that we have. And so I just recently... um, my friend Tim sent the, this video to me. He goes, this makes me think of you, which, which is a huge compliment in of itself. But I was home alone on Friday night and decided to do an experiment. I opened a bottle of wine and posted, get validated here, comment to get yours. And with the intention of trying to do a digital version of what this character did in the movie. And a few people, a lot of people thought I was joking or thought I was being tongue-in-cheek. Some people thought I was trying to do my version of the manipulation of the Facebook algorithm to try to trick people into posting so that I would, you know, raise my visibility in people's Facebook streams. No, that's not what I was trying to do. I was legitimately trying to uh, play with this idea of validation for no reason. Would you like some? I would like to validate you. And it was amazing. It was so powerful. And it just, it kept going and going and going. I think it was a couple hundred so far, and I'm still trying to get through them all. And when I say get through them, I'll continue. You know, if people keep posting, do me, do me. I'm like, yes, I would be happy to. And so I'm continuing to do that. And it was a really beautiful exercise because all sorts of people posted, people that I know very well, and that was always fun to say things that I know about this person, things that I respect or admire, and just to be able to say so. Sometimes it's things that I've said to them already. Sometimes it's things that they know about themselves but are nice to hear. And sometimes I would have this thought that would come to me like, I wonder if they know how they impact me and other people in this way. Maybe not a way that they overtly No, people that maybe see themselves as performers, but I know them as someone who is so attentive to the needs of their friends or anyone that is in front of them. And I legitimately tried to be personal for every single person. In the movie, there's sometimes, I mean, obviously the guy doesn't know these people are walking up to him, so he's just giving them compliments as best he can. But some of the compliments, as he continues, they're more than just great shoes. They're compliments or validation, not compliments necessarily, validation about the human condition. So if there was somebody I knew I had things to go on, somebody that maybe I didn't know very well, I would often go to their pu- Facebook page and look at their public information and try to see if there were things about them that I could quickly see as, oh, this is something that is important to them. I would like to validate them. Or maybe just notice that, oh, they've got a family. They're a parent. They have a creative side in this art that they're doing. And in these so, I would say, mundane and normal expressions of being a human, being a parent, there is so much depth in in that valor and courage and in that path that 
I think deserves validation. And so it was so fun to, to sink into what are the things about this person's life that knowing them or not, I would like to validate or they deserve to be validated. Because I think we, we so easily... It, our world, our default world, our culture, our media, our entertainment, our marketing, the, the massive bombardment of information that we get is flavored, is tinted and tainted by a profound sense of not enoughness, by a, a bitter and ugly messaging of what we need to be okay, what's wrong with us so that we can buy something, so that we can put our faith in others, so that we can kind of settle into our consumer role and trust these you know, corporations and uh, massive industries to tell us what we need, to sell us what we need. And our system requires that for it to continue to grow in the way that it does or to maintain or to not implode dramatically. Maybe that's a topic for another day. But when we are the victims of this messaging, it's the opposite of validation. It's the refocusing away from everything that we know to be good about ourselves to what is not good. We might look in the mirror and go, all right, my thighs look pretty good. And then in the background, the radio uh, ad is for, you know, have problem dry elbows? Well, no longer be ashamed of that. And you're like, oh my gosh, should I be ashamed of my dry elbows? And we forget how beautiful our calves are. And suddenly I'm all focused on what is wrong with us. And a little bit of validation can help refocus us to what we're doing right. And the media that we, 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 Enjoy. I, I've been so having so much fun with superhero movies and uh, Netflix lately, but it does really focus on heroism being physical heroics, being physical strength, being bravery against physical harm. And we forget that, yes, there is heroism in fighting a bad guy, but in the modern world, the warrior's path is not always, it's very rarely about fighting off danger in a physical way. It's often about working through fear, about standing up for what we believe in, for speaking our truth when it may not be popular, for being ourselves in this world that has so much messaging against following our truth so much shame, so much judgment. So there is courage. There is a warrior's path in doing nothing but being yourself. I would say perhaps that is the most brave thing you can do. That is a profound activism. And that's something that came up over and over as I would try to validate people. It's like, thank you for being you. And you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Because we, <laughs> we often, I'll say, when I say we, I'm generally saying, I myself do this, and maybe you do too. It is so... The, 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 the voice that says, you're not far enough along, is so much louder than the voice that says, hey, you're doing okay. And the truth is, we're doing okay! You, right now, you're doing great. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Have you stumbled a bunch? Of course. What kind of human experience would you be having if you didn't stumble? Certainly one where you didn't try hard enough. You didn't stretch yourself. You didn't exercise the privilege of being a human where you're allowed to grow through the process of getting knocked down. That is not the reason to judge and, and, and have negative feelings. That is, that should be your validation. Woo, I got knocked down a bunch of times. I embarrassed myself profoundly. I heard these words that told me I am no good at this and I did it anyway. And so 
as my wine bottle got finished, the night just kept going and, and these messages kept going and I kept getting more and more people and, and the reactions that I got from people was, was beautiful to the point was like, oh, just like in the movie, this is important. This hits people in ways that are, are hard to explain because it is such a vacuum in our culture. And I realized um, I went to a party the next day. Uh, actually, first I went out to a club and I had people run up to me and go, oh, I saw the validation thread. Do me, do me. And I was like, sure, okay. And I was like, wouldn't that be cool if I became the validation guy? And I started doing it in person to people. First, I would, the people might ask me oh, about that, the thread and I would talk about it and they go, oh, can I validate you? And then I just started, you know, unprovoked. Hey, haven't seen you in a while. I've been doing this thing of validating people. Can I validate you? And then sit for a second and try to um, think of something, some reason of why I think they're amazing and why they're doing a great job. And it's, the more I do it, the more I am able to have this kind of library of ideas and thoughts and reasons why people are great and why people are deserve validation and why we are so uh, irrationally blind to what's good about ourselves and how and it became you know this intoxication as 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 I I would see people light up and be like wow that's I want to I want to light as many people up as possible can I do you can I do you and a couple of times things came up where, where, uh, or the, the thought, someone asked me a question, what would, what would you validate this person if they requested? And I haven't got to that period, but what would I do if somebody asked for validation? But I also knew that there are reasons that, that I had criticisms of, of things this person had done. And I think where I'm at right now is that in this exercise, this is a validation exercise, and this is not the time or place to punish or remind of someone's weaknesses. I think that can be a tempting thing in any relationship. When you feel criticism in one area, you withhold praise and affirmation in other areas. And I need think I think I need to make sure that this I don't let this become that in case I fall into my human judgments of people and and hold on to them in ways. No, this is a validation exercise. Some other beautiful things happened as this continued. Several people started it on their own page. They reposted and said, hey, Halcyon's been doing this. I'm going to do it too. Post a comment if you would like me to validate you. A lot of people gave me validation, which feels great. Not why I did this, of course. Not of course, but no, not why. I, I feel very lucky. In fact, one of the reasons why I wanted to do it is because I feel like I get an over... Uh, maybe more than my share of validation because I do so many public things. and I very much am grateful and appreciate it. But that was so nice when people would say, give me their version of it. And another really cool thing happened, which was that somebody would post, I would give them some validation, and then someone else that knew them would comment and give them their version of validation. It was like, oh, hey, is, are the floodgates open? Is this now, are we, is it okay to just like randomly and blindly and for no reason tell people why we think they're awesome? Well then, doom. And so this, this thread became more than just my responses. It became this garden where anyone could plant a seed or could add some water or fertilizer to someone's spirit whether or not they needed it or not. I think we all need it. Some people were very clear about, I don't, I don't need validation, but I'm curious what you'd say. I'm like, that's, you know, I, this isn't about neediness. I think we all could use it. So it was a, it is a beautiful process. I continually, I want to continue it. I'm actually thinking about ways to try to do it in more physical ways. For example, making a booth to bring to Burning Man, a validation booth, or to other events, or to muggle events. Maybe I've been very inspired by Mikey's Hug Deli, which is uh, 
I've talked about it in the past. It is a one of my favorite interactive art pieces. Mikey created this, it's like a lemonade stand where you can order different types of hugs and every hug costs two compliments. It's magic and anybody can work behind it. Mikey doesn't work it, he builds it, puts up these aprons and then anybody can go behind it and offer hugs and receive compliments. So this was, this is influenced by Mikey's Hug Deli as well. And he brings the Hug Deli to Burning Man events. He also sometimes brings it down to the boardwalk in Newport Beach and just cracks the wall between default normalcy and this crazy interactive participatory world that uh, I feel so lucky to be a part of. And so I'm thinking maybe the validation booth could go and be a bigger expression in the world. Maybe it could even be a, a offshoot of a free hugs thing. I've been thinking that maybe it'd be cool to go to the mall this next weekend or the weekend after that as people are getting frenzied and panicked and falling into the, the holiday gifting frenzy to just hang out in the mall with a free validation sign and let people know they're doing a great job. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. Thank you for all your care as you take care of so many of these holiday needs for your family and the people you love. Good job. So if you have interest in uh, joining me for a validation outing, let me know. If you go out and do it on your own, let me know. If you'd like to participate in the thread, post away. But in case we don't connect in those areas, let me just tell you, I think you're amazing. I feel so lucky to be alive in this time when we can interact in these physical and digital ways where we can lift each other up. I know that sometimes it feels like it's too hard, but you keep going. And that is your warrior path. Keep being you. You keep shining your light. Even when it's hard. And that deserves appreciation and validation. So thank you. Thank you for being you. Happy Hug Nation. I love you. Stay tuned for more Hug Nation. I went to go see a, a children's recital uh, where there was, half of it was kids playing piano and half of it was kids singing. And it was kids from ages from five to like 16, all the way up till, you know, seniors in high school. And the, I'm so glad I went. There was varying degrees of skills. By that I mean, these were, this was a recital. This wasn't a concert. Nobody paid to see someone who is a incredible singer or piano player. These were parents and family and friends that were there to support and witness people they love sharing their expressions. And so some of the singing was incredible. Some of it was not so good from a traditional stance. And, and that's what made it so awesome. I know that when I was young, I got some not so favorable response to my singing when I was in church choir. And I stopped singing. I still don't do karaoke and did not sing publicly until like two years ago. I I saw people sing in this meditation group I was in. At the end of it, everyone was sharing songs and people shared songs that weren't good singers. And I, it blew my mind. I was like, wait a minute, what are you doing? You're not good enough to sing publicly. And then I realized, wait, they're not singing to impress anyone. They're singing because they love singing. That was a game changer for me. That you can perform creatively, not because you're trying to impress anyone, but because you love doing it. There is the book uh, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. She talks a lot about how in our culture, we, we start to steer people away from creative expression 
at a certain point in our lives if we don't think they're good enough to make a living at it. And she says, look back into history and you can see that, you know, there was a time when everybody would sing around the fire. Everybody would be a craftsperson. Everybody repaired their clothes and sewed their things and etched into their stuff and did leather working. It was just like part of being a human is being creative. And yet we have this culture where we create a creative class and the rest of us consume it. And so as I'm watching these children express so energetically from the heart. I was so, I, I mean, I was so moved. I, I cried a bunch of times listening to little kids sing like The Piano Man by Billy Joel and songs from Annie. And uh, I, I was, it, it, it felt like this is, this is, maybe this is related to the validation. Like these kids deserve validation, not because of their talents, but they deserve validation because of their courage, because of their, expression and there will be a million voices that tell them they're not good enough there'll be a million voices that raise their eyebrows and make them feel not good enough and so to have this opportunity to be like woo it was great and i felt a lot of uh, i just felt like i was watching something precious seeing these little humans dipping into this source creative energy in a very vulnerable way, in a way that I think can make a big difference in how that human grows and expresses themselves for their whole lives. I know that, that most people I know for their entire lives are battling that, that shame or judgment about are they good enough. And the few people that can bypass that, that can sing because they love singing, not because they're good, that can paint because they love painting, not because they're good, that can dance because they love dancing, not because they look good. They do it in spite of those things. If you can dance like no one's watching, if you can sing like no one's listening, if you can, then you, you have the human experience that you are gifted with consciousness. So I, bravo to all those who give it their all and belt it out and break out and sweat. It's, it, is, it is a huge part of the, the depth of, of human consciousness is to, to, to get out of the chair of consuming and into the stage, the stance, the dance floor, the playing field of 100% balls out. Woo! Woo! Thank you for being a part of today's Hug Nation. I am, as always, this is a highlight of my week. It is a validation in so many ways. I hope you have an opportunity to be validated and to validate and to walk your walk. If I haven't made it clear, you being you is powerful activism in the world. And there are so many ripples of goodness that you create that you will never see. Trust me. I love you. If you enjoy this, share it with a friend, an open-hearted person who might be part of our wonderful collective Hug Nation family. Do I have something? Uh, did, I, did, did, did audio not work today? Sorry if that was the case. Oh, did I have no audio? That would be a bummer. I was trying to use these funky microphones. Maybe I'm just doing a silent puppet show. But if you're doing a silent puppet show, why would anybody watch? Well, maybe they're making fun of my hair, Senor Hand. Oh, why you call me Senor Hand? Makes me self-conscious about my hand that looks like lips and fingers. And I, it, it is just... Listen, I don't think this is really entertaining enough to just start talking about this in the middle of broadcast. We just had this whole thing about validation. Oh, and so now you, you anti-validate me? Make fun... Oh, 
this isn't going well. Um, what I meant to say is, you are my favorite. What? What about me? You're both my favorite puppets? Can I say puppets? Yes. Okay, well, you're both my favorite puppets. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, can we talk later? Of course.